Is there something you could say about your thoughts about the Cardano project that uh, Charles Hoskinson leads? They've um, they've mm -hmm. uh, they worked on some interesting ideas mm -hmm. that um, mirror some of the ideas in Ethereum, mm -hmm. proof of stake, uh, working on um, uh, smart contracts and all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Is, is there something again uh, positive, inspiring that you could say? Are they yeah. a competitor? Is it complementary technology? It's uh, I mean, there's definitely interesting ideas in there. I mean, I do think Cardano takes a bit of a different approach to, than Ethereum in that you know they really emphasize having these big academic proofs for everything, um, whereas Ethereum tends to be more okay with heuristic arguments. I mean, in part because it's just trying to do more faster. Um, but you know, there's definitely very interesting things that come out of um, you know IOHK research. Um, so, is there, can you comment on that kind of idea? I, as sort of uh, having a foot in research, enjoy Charles's kind of emphasis on papers and like deep mm -hmm. academic rigor. Is there what's the role of deep research rigor in the world of cryptocurrency? Interesting. I'm actually the sort of person who thinks deep rigor is overrated. Um, the reason why I think deep rigor is overrated is because I think like the the in terms of like why protocols fail, I think the number of failures th or that are outside the model is even more important, is like bigger and more important than the failures that are inside the model, right? So like if you take selfish mining, for example, like the, 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 the that original discovery from 2013 that showed how um, Bit Bitcoin does, like it, even if it has a 50% uh, fault tolerance, assuming everyone's honest, it only has a, yeah, you know, zero to 33% fault tolerance, depending on your network model, if you assume uh, rational actors. And like, to me, that was an, th that was a great example of like an outside the model failure, right? Because traditional consensus research just up, up until or before the yeah, blockchain days did not think about like incentivization much, right? Like there was a little bit of thought about incentivization. There's like so a couple of papers on the Byzantine altruist rational model, but it wasn't that deep. It was mostly operating under the assumption that you know, this we're going to make consensus between 15 participants in these are institutions. And if something goes wrong, then, you know, if it was, we can figure out whether or not it was deliberate offline. And if they did something evil, we can sue them. Whereas, you know, in the crypto world, you can't do that. Right. And so, like, the, that whole discovery basically arose just because, like, you know, the model of uh, traditional uh, consensus research just, like, didn't cover those possibilities. And then, if, like, once you go out of the model, those like, other issues do exist, right? Um, so, but then at the same time, like, there, there definitely are um, protocols that turn out to be that do have failures inside the model. Like, this reminds me of uh, the time when uh, I think I found a yeah, bug in a proposed uh, consensus implementation from uh, either BitShares or EOS. This mm -hmm. happened around the end of 2017. Um, so that was definitely inside the model because, like, they had a very clear idea of what they were trying to achieve. They had a very clear description. And, like, there's a very clear mathematical um, argument for why the description doesn't lead to what they're trying to achieve. But, like, ultimately, what you're trying to achieve achieve can never be fully math uh, described in formal language, right? Like I think this is the big discovery of, um, you know, the AI safety people, for example, right? Like just having a, a specification of what you want is an insanely hard problem. And like the more powerful the optimizer that you're giving the instructions to, the more you have to be careful. Um, and so, you know, I think there are the kind of these two sides. And then the other thing is that a lot, like a lot of the academic approach, ends up like basically optimizing for other people inside of the academic system, right. and it doesn't really optimize for like curious outsiders. Whereas, like I personally, Matt, like totally optimize for curious outsiders, or at least I, I feel like I strive to. So I guess like that's my case for why I uh, like tends to behave in ways that you know occasionally traditional academic types criticize as being reckless. Um, but I mean, on the other hand, you know, there's, I mean, there's definitely real benefits that come from like t just taking a, a, a rigorous approach, especially when, you know, you know what the thing that exa like, you know, what the specification is uh, of what you're trying to get. And like, you're trying to kind of improve your way or provide protocols that actually provide that and like you know exactly what you're looking for. I feel like realistically you probably want to do both kinds of analysis. 
And like sometimes you even want to do both kinds of analysis and stages, right? Like you have, you want to do more quick and dirty things and you even want public feedback on the quick and dirty stuff. And then later on you formalize it more and then you get more feedback. Um, like in general, I guess I feel like the norms of research in the future, like there, it, the internet has just changed so much. There's no way that it's not going. Uh, and you know, it's it's even changed like collaboration structures and like the patterns in which we yep. work with each other. There's no way that the correct structure for collab collaborative research is the same as what it was 15 years ago. But like what combination of these existing components and of new ideas it is like that's something that's, you know, totally legitimate to kind of fight it out. And I think it's great that there's uh, different ecosystems that have different attitudes to things. Like, you know, I think, you know, there's a big possibility that, you know, things that the Ethereum, uh, ways that the Ethereum ecosystem approaches some problems is totally wrong. And if there's other ecosystems with different principles and they can do well, that's something that we can learn from.